Instead of Chag Sameach, we're going to say, can you hear me? It's like you're muted. It's the next iteration of that, right? Chag Sameach, everybody. We're so glad that, uh, that you're with us this morning, that you can hear us, and in time we will hear you as well, God willing. We, uh, we hope that the continuation of Shavuot is, is going beautifully with, for you. And, uh, and, and with that, we are going to get started. We have a full service. Um, and, and for those who were with us last night to hear our confirmation students speak, I hope you're still enjoying the ripples of, of that goodness and their powerful thoughts and their words and their many questions. Join us, please, in song, in prayer, in silence, and in movement. Now Mount Sinai was all in smoke, for Adonai had come down upon it in fire, we read from Exodus. Torah given amidst fire is compared to fire. Just as fire lives forever, so do the words of Torah live forever. When one draws near to fire, one is burned by it. When one moves away from fire, one is chilled. On Shavuot, we warm ourselves by the light of Torah, our precious heritage. Those beautiful words we just heard, those beautiful words that we joined together in praying, say, how fair are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel. I, through your abundant love, enter your sanctuary, your home. This morning, we make spaces in our sanctuaries, in our homes, and we invite in the divine, and we invite in the depth of our prayer. As we say praise to you, Adonai, our God sovereign of the universe who formed the human body with skill, creating the body's many pathways and openings. 
It is well known before your throne of glory that if one of them be wrongly opened or closed, it would be impossible to endure and stand before you. Blessed are you, Adonai, who heals all flesh, working wondrously. Baruch Ata Adonai, Rofecho Basar Maflila Asot. Let's continue praying together. I find by experience, not by reasoning, but by my own discovery that God is near me and I can be near God at all times. I cannot explain it, but I am as sure of my experience as I am of the fact that I live and love. I cannot explain how I've come to live and love, but I know I do, and in the same way, I know I am in contact with God. Baruch Ata Adonai El Melech Gadol Batish Bachot El Hahodaot Adon Haniflaot Habocher Beshere Zimra Melech El Heho Olamim. Praised are you, sovereign of wonders, crowned in adoration, delighting in song, eternal majesty. If we continue with the Hashi Kadesh, you will hear some different melodies this morning because of Shavuot, the three festivals. So Hashi Kadesh, Barhu, and Yechamocha will sound a little bit different. I don't mean to throw you off, but it's, it's every obligation of the cantor to use a special motif, a special motif for Shalosh Regalim, for three festivals, so we can distinguish bet between Shabbat, between five holidays, and between the three festivals. So please join me.
and let us rise for our call to worship in body or in spirit. Chadash al Tzion Ta'ir, Venishhechu Lanu Meherala Oro, Baruch Ata Adonai, Yotzer Hameot. Our rabbis taught 613 mitzvot were given to Moses. Micah reduced them to three. Do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Isaiah based all the mitzvot upon two of them keep justice and righteousness. Amos saw one guiding principle upon which all 613 are founded seek me and live. And Habakkuk expounded the Torah on the basis of a single thought. The righteous shall live by their faith. Akiva taught the great principle of the Torah is expressed in the mitzvah, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But Ben Azai found a principle even more fundamental. This is the story of humanity. When God created us, God made us in the divine image. And Hillel summed up the Torah in this maxim. What is hateful to you, do not do to others. The rest is commentary. You must go and study it. Baruch ata Adonai, habocher be'amo Yisrael be'ahava. And please be seated. Like Moses, Miriam, and all Israel, we sing out and we rejoice. Pray as if everything depends on God and act as if everything depended on you.
Your might, O oh God, renews the earth with dewdrops of light and blessing. Let the earth be illumined and blessed. With dewdrops of joy and delight, let the earth rejoice and sing out. With dewdrops of life and well being, let the earth be revived and improved. With dewdrops of redemption, let the earth be redeemed. For blessing and not for curse, for life and not death, for abundance, not want. And please be seated. Atava Khartanu Mikol Ha Amin, Ahapta Hotanu, Baritzita Banu, Ba Romam Tanu Mikola La Shonot, Ba Kidash Tanu Bamitz Hotecha, Ba Kerav Tanu Malkenu, Ba Avodotecha, Ba Simcha Hagadol, Ba Hakadosh Alenu Karata. Ba Titain Lanu Adonai Lohenu Ba Hava Maudim, La Simcha Hag Uzmanim, La Sason. At Yom Chag Hashavuot Hazezman Matan Torah Tenu, Mikrai Kodesh Zecher Litziat Mitzrayim. You have chosen us in love and favor by making us holy through your mitzvot and drawing us close to your service. That through us your great and holy name being become known in all the earth. In your love, Adonai, your God, you have given us feasts of gladness and seasons of joy. This Shavuot season of our receiving Torah to unite in worship and recall the exodus from Egypt. Elohenu ve'elohei avotenu ve'imotenu, ya'alei ve'yavo ve'yizcher zichronenu, v'zichron kol amcha b'et Yisrael lefanecha l'tova u'lechen u'lechesed, u'lerachamim u'lechayim u'leshalom, v'yom chag ha'shavuot hazeh. Our God and God of our ancestors, be mindful of your people Israel, and recall our merit for good and grace and in loving kindness and compassion for life and peace on this festival of Shavuot. Zochrenu Adonai Eloheinu bo letova, ufokdenu bo livracha, v'hoshienu bo lechaim. This day, remember us for well-being. This day, bless us with your nearness, and this day, help us to a fuller life. Bestow upon us the blessing of your holy festivals, and may we so celebrate them as to be worthy of your blessing. Our God and God of our ancestors, make us holy with your mitzvot, and let your Torah be our way of life. May our rest on this day be pleasing in your sight. Satisfy us with your goodness, gladden us with your salvation, and purify our hearts to serve you in truth. Let your holy festivals remain our heritage, and let us celebrate them with joy, so that all Israel hallowing your name may have cause to rejoice. We praise you, Adonai, who sanctifies the house of Israel 
and the festivals, Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekadesh Yisrael v'hazmanim. Baruch Ata Adonai ha-machazir shkin atol blessed are you whose divine presence is felt again in Zion. Baruch Ata Adonai, atov shimcha ulachana elehodot, blessed are you Adonai, whose goodness deserves thanks and praise. We continue now with our prayers, our psalms, our hopes for peace. take a few moments in silence, in prayer, and in meditation. We turn now to Hallel, to our psalms, to our words of praise, which are typically shared and, and, and offered on especially joyous occasions, Shavuot, Shavuot being one of them, when, when we are taught that praise of God is particularly appropriate, though I would argue that praise of God is always appropriate. And what are the ideas specifically mentioned in, in these psalms in Hallel? The Gemara tells us that the Hallel includes five major themes, the exodus from Egypt, the splitting of the Red Sea, the giving of the Torah, our day today that we celebrate, the revival of the deceased, and the difficulties preceding the Messianic era. We recite Hallel, these psalms, as a reminder, an affirmation, and an aspiration of Jewish history from the birth of our nation to the establishment of the Messianic times. And as has been said, in Hallel we express our joy at past miracles and our faith in future miracles. Please join us. Join me. 
We'll continue now with our Seder Kriyat HaTorah, our service for the reading of Torah, and we'll invite you, please, in body or in spirit, to rise. And please be seated. This morning, it will probably come as no surprise to you that we are reading from the Ten Commandments 50 days after the exodus from Egypt, and we will hear these words shared by the cantor. 
It is the custom for some people, uh, if that is yours, please join us in standing to hear the recitation of the Ten Commandments. Uh, we will leave that decision to you, and we can't see you, so you're all good either way. But please hear these words, hold these words, and, and, uh, and, and find place in your heart and in your ways for these words. The cantor just asked me actually if she should leave the screen up and, 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 and I said yes because this is actually a picture of our scroll from which she is reading and we thought that though you can't see it on the table that you could see it here. So this is actually a picture of the scroll from which the cantor will be chanting. <coughs> Words that are centering for us as a people, the Ten Commandments, the receiving of the Torah, words that have kept us together for thousands of years and words that give us strength. So we turn now and we make the transition from those powerful words, those uniting words, to the Mishaberach for those who need healing, wholeness, strength, and courage, patience, kindness, and compassion, as we say, Mishaberach Avotenu Vimotenu Avraham Yitzchak V'Yaakov, Sarah Rivka Rachel Velea, Hu Yivarech Et Aholim. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and give strength to those who are struggling. This Chag morning, we are holding in our prayer, Shana Esther Bat Rochel, Chaya Necha Bat Riva Leah, Katriel Parachia Ben Herschel Lazer V'Shoshana, 
Sarah but Abraham the Sarah, Alan Skirker, Laura Braun, Miriam but Ella, Stephen Brent, Rini Feingold, Meredith Cabanis Ader, Reverend Gordon Webster, Irving Manis, Ralph Bookbinder, Masha Batsheva, Greg Novozenitz, Susan Silton Tobias, Kim Stanger Delisle, Gabrielle Berger, Georgia Krent, Hank Ferrioli, Nancy Cohn, Lynn Fragan, Vicki Eckstein Kennedy, and Yoav, Shuf Yoav Shufrier. If there are others whom you would add to our list for healing, for wholeness, for strength, please, would you unmute yourself and share those names aloud with us or add them to the chat? Let us hold all of those, all of those in Israel who are needing strength, all of those who are suffering in the many places whose names we may not know but who we are holding in prayer as we say. May the blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for their health to be restored and their strength to be revived. May God send them renewal of body and renewal of spirit as we all of us join together in saying, Amen. We continue now with the companion to our Torah reading, the Haftarah. We read this morning, as is customary on Shavuot, from the book of Ruth. And though unlike in, in the Ten Commandments, unlike in our story, our powerful story at Sinai, there is no fire and there is no thunder in her story. Rabbi, or rather Jill Hammer, uh, reminds us that Ruth represents the covenant, the Brit, for she chooses, she actually and actively chooses to be a part of the Israelite nation out of her deep love for her mother-in-law, Naomi. And as we hear these words that the cantor will be sharing with us in just a moment, and all who choose Judaism, whether by descent or by intent, we celebrate Ruth's choice, and she is held as a model for being actively and choosing Judaism in a way that only she could. So we hear this morning from words from the book of Ruth, chapter 1. special props for the book of Ruth and it's very interesting that the, the same melody that we use um, for the book of Ruth that I'm going to be chanting it's the same melody that we use under the chupa when two people come together in the holy ceremony to become hakon and wife so the same melody is used now for Shavuot representing representing people of Israel and Torah and God merging together in one covenant. So this is the reason why the same melody is used for Book of Ruth. It's also a very pretty melody. So let's recite the blessings together. Baruch
Ruth chose to follow Naomi, and the son chooses to follow the cantor. So we are, we are actually amazed that uh, it, it is a joy. I don't know how you feel, hard as it is, to navigate all the different tech needs and all the different needs that, that we all have during this, this peculiar time. The one over which we have no control is the sun in this sanctuary. But Cantor, I don't know how you feel. I've missed it. I've missed it. But it's easy for me to say from my side, right? It's easy for me to say. Yeah. We'll, we'll continue as we replace the Torah in its, in its resting spot in the ark. And we'll ask you, please, to rise. And please be seated. So Zoom has, in fact, opened a world of possibilities for us. I cannot imagine these last 14 months without it. I can, however, imagine 14 months without noticing every single move I make, at least from the waist up, every freckle, every wrinkle, every gray hair, every bad hair day, and I will admit that more than once, even after turning off my video, I have wondered if it was really off, skeptical about the veracity of that little red line through the camera, uh, through the camera image, and trite, maybe even vain, I know against the backdrop of a global pandemic, but seeing myself mirrored back every time I logged on, has provided much information. Far more than just our physical appearance, I think we have all noticed a great deal this year about ourselves and about others, about what is important and what is not, what can be changed and what cannot. And this Shavuot morning, we celebrate one of our most important moments, the receiving of the Torah. Fundamentally, it changed who we are as a people and who we could become. It galvanized, centralized, and organized us. Many describe that life-altering moment for our people as the epic moment, the epic sound and light show. An earlier passage from Exodus 20 gives us some insights. V'chol ha'am ro'im et ha'kolot ve'et Halapidim, the et kol hashofar, the et hahar ashem. All the people saw the sounds and lightning, the voice of the horn and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they fell back and stood at a distance. Sound, light, smoke. Wait. They saw the sounds? Writer Josh Fleet comments that there is some disagreement about how to translate that particular verse. The people saw something. Today the word kolot means voices or possibly thunder, but here it just probably means sounds. And besides the disagreement he writes, there's even an inclination among some translators to downplay the ocular nature of this, account, this, this encounter. The Jewish Publication Society has it as all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning and the blare of the horn. Koran says they perceived the thunderings and the lightnings and the sound of the shofar. Another translation, the Matsuda says the voice of the shofar. Chabad and all the people saw the voices and the torches. 
Reb Zalman says, now all the people were seeing the thunder sounds, the flashing torches, and Fleet asks us the unavoidable question, how would you translate the untranslatable enigma? What does it actually mean to see the thunder or see the voices? Ibn Ezra, our commentator, citing this passage wrote, and all the nations saw the sounds. I have previously explained the intent of seeing the sounds. All sensations join together and are processed at one point. And this is the meaning when they saw the sounds and the lightning. This drove a person to be afraid. And the voice of the shofar was something never heard before. And the mountain itself was smoke. When they saw these wonders, they couldn't help but tremble. Paraphrasing Ibn Ezra, Fleet says that revelation sort of fried the senses of the Israelites. Flashes of flame and lightning, mountains of smoke, seemingly sentient shofars, it was just all too much. And the collective motherboard was overloaded with information and as a means of self-protection, funneled every sensation actually into the ears. But this was perhaps even more overwhelming and the people quaked with terror. And what did they ask for? They asked for it, please, to stop. It was too much. Unlike us, they didn't have the option to press the mute or to turn off their cameras. Senses inundated, overwhelmed by the magnitude of the moment and afraid, they pleaded for it to stop. And a short while later, after the thunder and the lightning had ended, and after Moses had written down the commandments, the breach, the covenant, the pact God was making with all Israel, we read, so Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and as Moses came down from the mountain bearing two tablets of the pact, Moses was not aware that the skin of his face was radiant since he had spoken with God. Aaron and all the Israelites saw that the skin of Moses' face was glowing, was radiant, and they were afraid coming near him. But Moses called to them and to Aaron, and all the leaders of the assembly returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. And afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he instructed them concerning all that God had imparted to him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before God to speak with God, he would leave the veil off until he came back out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see how radiant the skin of Moses' face was. Moses would put the veil back over his face until he would speak with God. Rabbi Claudio Kopchik writes that after this encounter with God, Moses' face was shining. And the Israelites were actually afraid of that radiance. Because of their fear, they didn't want to come near him. Moses, our greatest prophet and leader, understood that what was needed was to cover his face with a veil. So powerful was Moses' experience that his face needed to be covered. So as we sit at this intersection of Shavuot, the receiving of the Torah, Yiskor, one of our prescribed times for remembering those we have loved and lost, and confusion about our own face coverings as we slowly emerge from our own altogether different but powerful moment in history. Can there be any connections? In Shemot Rabbah, a commentary on the book of, of, uh, of Exodus, we read, all the people saw the thunders. It's not written thunder, hakol, but rather thunders, hakolot. And Rabbi Yochanan teaches that when God's voice came forth at Mount Sinai, it divided itself into 70 human languages so that the whole world might understand it and every nation heard it in their own language. So perhaps that cacophony at Har Sinai was akin to when we all unmute ourselves at the exact same time and after that one overwhelming, somewhat discordant moment if we pause, if we imagine our computer screens as a kind of veil, we can hear. We can see and we can feel all at once. 
in a multitude of languages, as it were, an echo of the love, the eagerness, the hope, the power, and the holiness of that moment thousands of years ago. How can we listen for the word of God? By listening to one another. And all the people saw the sounds and the lightning. The word is roim. It is in the present tense, suggesting that the children of the children of Israel, that is us, that we are still seeing those revelatory sounds. Perhaps noticing so much of ourselves during these last 14 months is a bold reminder that we too are part of this breach, this covenant, this ongoing revelation. That there is a difference between a veil and a cloak. That there is tremendous power in seeing and being seen and welcoming every opportunity to look for the face of God. We turn now to look for that face of God as we turn to Yiskel, remembering those whom we have loved and lost. It was Martin Buber who wrote that real faith does not mean professing what we hold true in a ready-made formula. It means holding ourselves open to the unconditional mystery which we encounter in every sphere of our life and which cannot be compromised in any formula. It means that from the very roots of our being, we should always be prepared to live with this mystery as one lives with one another. Real faith means the ability to endure life in the face of this mystery. This is our time to explore that space. We say birth is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, from grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat until not looking backwards or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high point along the way, but in having made the journey step by step, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey. We continue now with the words of Psalm 23. From Psalm 120, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from God who made heaven and earth. God will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. 
God is your keeper, God is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. God will keep you from all evil, keeping your life. God will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. We invite you now to take a few moments and to read, to pray, to remember.
holy, compassionate God on high, to our loved ones who have entered eternity, grant clear and certain rest with you in the lofty heights of the sacred and pure whose brightness shines like the very glow of heaven. Source of mercy forever enfold them in the embrace of your wings, secure their souls in eternity. Adonai, they are yours. They will rest in peace. And we will join together in saying, Amen. Join us, please, as we continue with our concluding prayers, the Eleni. Sally Graff.
Republic, and all who mourn and live in this part of France and Troy, who are the rich, together with them are men and women and children. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach, thank you for being with us this beautiful morning. And, uh, and we hope that the rest of your holiday will be filled with dairy. If that, is your, if that is your liking and your practice, that is the custom during Shavuot. But we hope whatever you are doing and wherever you are, that it is a good and a strong and a healthy day, one filled with, with, with love and, and meaning and, and memory, power of memory. Uh, we want to just, just share a very, very few announcements with you. Um, we continue with our last class of our lunch and learn that had been on Mondays, but our last class, our last Maimonides class is Wednesday at noon, um, and, uh, and hope you'll join us. And the Women's Chavara is having at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening the Healthy Living for Your Brain and Body session, which, which promises to be wonderful. And then we return and reconvene on Friday and Saturday for Shabbat services, Torah study, and, and services on Saturday morning. And, uh, and hope that if you have RSVP that you'll be able to join us in the sanctuary for Saturday morning and that as we increase, increase capacity um, that, uh, that we will increase our skill set for how to do this smoothly and well. We're getting there with great support and great help, uh, yours especially and, and with, uh, with the help of, of, of people you can't see in the sanctuary but who are helping us navigate all of that as well. And, uh, and finally, we want to uh, offer a mazel tov to Melissa and Scott Martin on the birth of their son, Wesley, and, uh, and also to his grandparents and, and our new temple members, Debbie and Lee Mandel. And finally, please mark Sunday, May 23rd at 7 p.m. to hear Rabbi Josh Garraway speaking once again. Thank you to, to Carol Goldsmith and family for sponsoring this series honoring Dennis Goldsmith and his memory. Uh, Josh Garraway, Rabbi Josh Garraway, will be speaking about making meaning in an ancient Alexandria, Jews, Christians, and allegories. So that is May 23rd at 7 p.m. Please be sure to, uh, to join us then. And uh, if there are any other announcements, we'll invite you please to add those to the chat box as we conclude this morning with Kiddush and our closing song. Please, for Kiddush, we'll invite you to rise in body or in spirit. And please be seated as we turn to our closing song, Eve Duet Adonai Basimcha, Worship God with Gladness. Chag Sameach, we wish you well. You can unmute yourself so you can.